Hi, my name is Janet and this is our second information video on applying for international protection in Ireland. In this video, we will look at four things. One, legal advice. Two, waiting for your substantive or main interview. Three, what to expect at the interview. And four, after the interview. The information can change, so always check the International Protection Office website for the most up-to-date information. It's important to emphasise that this is not legal advice. The question most applicants want to know is when they will be called for their main interview. If you are from one of the safe countries of origin, you will be given your interview date on the same day you make your international protection application. The interview is usually within two or three weeks. Applicants from all other countries wait a number of months for their interview date. Let's start with legal support. Once your application is made, you will be given the address of the Legal Aid Board where you can apply for legal support. There is no charge for this service. You also have the option of going to a private solicitor, but you will have to pay for this legal service. A solicitor will be appointed to represent you through the process. You are their client. The solicitor may work for the Legal Aid Board or may be a private solicitor working on behalf of the Legal Aid Board. Their job is to provide legal advice and help you prepare for your main interview and appeal if necessary. After you register for legal advice, the Legal Aid Board will send you a letter telling you who your solicitor is. Your solicitor will contact you to arrange a meeting, usually a few weeks before your interview. This meeting may take place in their office or over the phone. The solicitor will have a copy of your questionnaire, which will be used as the basis for your meeting. The solicitor will also explain what you can expect at the interview. You should tell your solicitor if there is anything you forgot to include in the questionnaire or if you have any extra documents to submit. They will send these to the IPO on your behalf. You should tell your solicitor if you have any special requests concerning the interview. A special request might be related to health needs during the interview or you may prefer to be interviewed by a woman or a man because your application involves sensitive issues. Solicitors usually do not attend the interview. If you are not happy with their legal service, you can make a complaint through the Legal Aid Board email address, which you'll find at the end of the video. So what can you do while waiting for your interview? Whether you have to wait weeks or months for your interview date, there are things you can do while you wait. Evidence. You will hear the word evidence a lot throughout the process. Evidence could be documents that support your application. Evidence can come in different formats, such as medical or police reports, membership cards, newspaper or research articles, but are not limited to these. The main thing to ensure is that the evidence comes from trustworthy sources. It can take time to gather evidence, so it's important to do this as soon as possible. Always keep a photocopy of any additional documents you send to your solicitor. Save any emails you sent requesting documents as they are proof you made the request. If the evidence doesn't arrive before your interview, it can still be submitted in the weeks after. It's important to say that many applicants are not able to provide any evidence, so don't worry if you don't have any. Your ID is evidence of who you are, so it's essential that your name is spelled correctly and your date of birth is correct. Tell your solicitor immediately if there is a mistake in any of your ID documents. Falsifying documents or using fake ID is an offence and could exclude you from the application process. A timeline. A written timeline is helpful in remembering the sequence of events that led you to fleeing your country. 
You should use the information you give to question 4.1 in your questionnaire as the basis for your timeline. Start with the date that the first incident or situation happened and work through the key dates describing exactly what happened. If you remember something that should have been included in the original questionnaire, then let your solicitor know as soon as possible. There are a number of services offering a range of free supports to international applicants. Some work nationally while others work with applicants in their area. It's always better to contact them as soon as possible as they may have waiting lists. There is a list of services at the end of this video. Getting involved locally. It's really important to get involved in local activities, improving your English, doing a course, volunteering or joining a club are great ways to get involved in your community. Getting involved is good for your health and shows you are making connections in your community. It is also important as you may be asked to submit character references from people you know in Ireland. And if you are eligible for a work permit, then you should apply and hopefully you will get a job. And the last thing, it's important to emphasise that waiting for your interview can be stressful, but keeping active and meeting people helps. Read over your questionnaire as often as you can. It can be really helpful to read your story aloud. And finally, try not to be influenced by what other people tell you about their interview. Only you can tell your story. The interview. I'll start with some very obvious things first. First check on Google Maps which of the IPO offices you have to go to. If you have children, you will have to organise childcare as you cannot bring them to the interview. Only feeding mothers can bring their baby to the interview. Couples will be interviewed separately on the same day and usually by the same interviewer. The interview can last anything from two hours to four hours, but the length of time is no indication of the outcome. On occasion, a second or callback interview may be required to clarify certain aspects of an applicant's claim. The interview, known as the main or substantive interview, is a very important part of the application process. Along with your questionnaire, the information you give in this interview will help decide which, if any, status will be granted to you. When you arrive at the IPO reception area, you will be asked to hand in your mobile phone. The interviewer will meet you and bring you to the interview room where you will be introduced to the interpreter. You will have a short chat with the interpreter to make sure that you understand each other. If you don't, it's really important to tell the interviewer. The interview will focus on three things. Why you left your country, what happened when you relocated and if you didn't, why not? And why you cannot return now? The interview is part of a legal process, so it's essential you are honest and accurate. Let's look at the role of the interviewer. Their job is to find out if your experience meets the criteria set out in the International Protection Act. You will find the criteria in the IPO booklet. They will give you plenty of time to explain why you are seeking protection. They will know a lot about what is happening in your country and, where possible, will have checked the information you give in your questionnaire. They are likely to challenge you on aspects of your claim which don't seem to be credible or where there are contradictions in your account. They will record what you are saying on a laptop throughout the interview. When the interview is over, they will review all the information and make a recommendation which, if any status, you may be eligible for. So what's expected of you? 
This is probably the most stressful yet important part of the international protection process. The interview focuses on whether your information is credible and whether your experience meets the criteria for protection. You are expected to cooperate fully and answer all questions truthfully. It's natural to be nervous and anxious, but it's important to answer all questions truthfully, tell the interviewer if you don't understand the question, tell them if you don't know the answer, never make up an answer or say something that someone told you to say, be as precise with dates and locations as possible, describe events in as much detail as possible, use words that clearly describe what happened, don't be embarrassed or ashamed about what happened. You are not to blame. Expect to be challenged if there are contradictions in what you are saying or have written. If there is any difference between what you said in your questionnaire and at the interview, you will need to explain why. It can be a very difficult and emotional experience, so don't be embarrassed if you get upset. Take your time. The tone of your voice and your facial expressions and how you behave at the interview are all important in connecting with the interviewer. At the end of the interview, you will be asked if you want to add anything. The interviewer will read back the answers they recorded. Because this is a legal document, it's important to correct anything that isn't accurate. Once you sign it, you are stating that it is accurate. After the interview, the IPO will make a recommendation to the Minister for Justice outlining which, if any status, you should be granted. You will get the recommendation letter a few weeks after the interview. That letter will state the outcome of your application under the three headings of refugee status, subsidiary protection and permission to remain. If you are refused refugee status or subsidiary protection, or both, you will be advised of your right to appeal that finding to the International Protection Appeals Tribunal, known as IPAT. If you feel you should have been granted a different status, you can make an appeal. The original status is not affected by an appeal. Some applicants will be refused status under all three headings. A refusal means that based on the information you give, the IPO assesses that you are not eligible for protection. The letter from the IPO will explain the reasons why your application was not successful. You will then have to talk to your solicitor about trying to provide an explanation or evidence in response. An appeal to IPAD has to be lodged within 15 working days or 10 working days in some limited circumstances. Your solicitor will advise you through the appeal process. You will find more information on the appeals in the IPO information booklet. So let me recap on the main points. Your questionnaire is the basis for the interview. The interview is when you get the opportunity to explain why you are applying for asylum. Be prepared to answer questions in great detail. The best advice is be honest and tell your story exactly as it happened. The decision is made based on the information being credible and whether it fits with the international protection criteria. The decision will decide what happens next. I hope you find the information in this video useful.